You're listening to Talking Hoosier Baseball, a podcast by fans from the iubase.com website for anyone wanting more information on the Indiana University baseball program. Welcome. We're recording this on Wednesday, January 27th, 2021. We're happy to welcome a special guest to the podcast, junior starting pitcher, Tommy Sommer. I'm Casty Palmer, and I'm joined by master of the RPI, Carl James. And, and it's been a couple months since we last checked in. And, and before we get to chat with Tommy, uh, Carl will get us caught up with Hoosier Highlights. All right, Cassidy. Uh, I'll highlight we would love to talk about would be a schedule, but we don't have one yet. So uh, we will continue on some other topics. Uh, 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 there's lots of different uh, publications out there, uh, but apparently we're becoming big, perfect game fans now because uh, in their uh, big, big 10 preview, they've got the Hoosiers predicted to win the conference and ranked 14th in the country uh, with two other uh, big 10 programs in the top 25. Um, Indiana, uh, Indiana is ranked, uh, well not ranked, but just outside the rankings for D1 among the first 10 teams considered outside the top 25 that was just announced. Um, we also have some updates from uh, Pro Hoosiers. Uh, Kyle Schwarber uh, signed a free agent deal with the Washington Nationals. Uh, he'll be in Washington on a one-year deal with uh, worth $10 million. Uh, Alex Dickerson has signed, uh, re-signed with the San, Fran- with the San Francisco Giants uh, for one year. He'll be making $2.1 million. Uh, Sam Travis has signed a minor league deal with the Seattle organization. Um, among uh, staff news, uh, Scott Rowland, player development uh, personnel, uh, he was fourth overall, uh, the highest percentage of the uh, uh, 2021 Hall of Fame ballot. Um, and he also had the biggest percentage gain year over year. Um, he is continuing to make strides. Uh, advanced statistics have really shown what, uh, what Scott Rowland and, and that look back that, uh, that his his quality as a major league ball player was huge. So uh, he may have another shot. He's going to be returning to the ballot in 22. Um, so that's a, uh, that's a few of the Hoosier highlights. Uh, we are, uh, we do have some, uh, some more things to share, but we're uh, going to kind of line those up uh, depending on who we talk to uh, over the next couple of weeks. So uh, keep, uh, keep out for these podcasts as we, uh, as we bring them out and we'll have more, more information and hopefully some information on the, uh, uh, when and how baseball is going to get started. Um, and now I'll pass it off to Cass, who will give us a statistical re- rundown on our guest, Tommy Summer. Thank you, Carl. Uh, looking at Tommy's stats, uh, on his career, he has a 313 ERA in 95 innings pitched. Uh, one of the big ones that stood out to me, he has 91 strikeouts compared to 33 walks. So that's almost three to one ratio. Uh, He has a 221 batting average against, and he has committed just one single error in his time as a Hoosier. Uh, In the shortened 2020 season, Tommy was starting off on a bit of a roll, uh, 261 ERA and 20 and two thirds innings pitched and had just a 177 batting average against. So Tommy, welcome to Talking Hoosier Baseball. Yeah, thanks guys for having me. I appreciate it. Tommy, uh, what sports uh, did you play growing up? Um, I played everything under the sun. Um, probably baseball, basketball, soccer, and football were the main ones. But um, growing up, baseball really stuck with me. I played soccer um, for a long time growing up. My dad was a big soccer guy, so um, he stuck me in that for a long time and finally convinced him in high school to kind of let me go and uh, pursue baseball a little bit more. Well, then specifically, how did you get into pitching? Just naturally, um, I played first base and outfield. I'm really slow, so I played first base and outfield a little bit growing up and uh, always pitched just because I liked it and was kind of decent at it, I guess. And uh, my Bulls coaches actually, my 13 or 14 year old year, took the bat out of my hand and said, "You're gonna, you're gonna pitch." So uh, I was forced out of being an elite hitter, unfortunately. So uh, who helped you the most in your athletic career growing up? Um. I would say for sure my dad, um, not necessarily because he was a baseball player. He didn't really, you know, coach me up in terms of the, the sport itself. Um, but he was definitely my biggest influence, obviously. Um, 
being around competitive environments, you know, going to his games growing up as a little kid, seeing, you know, <clears throat> players from all over the world, getting to be around um, really cool environments like that was, was something that I obviously now am so fortunate to be a part of and to have that experience. Um, and it just gave me a true love for competition, whether it be soccer, baseball, basketball, watching, you know, something on TV, you know, it, it was just something that came naturally to me because I'd been growing up around it for so long. And, and I'm very fortunate for that because I, I know it's a valuable resource that not very many people get to have. As you mentioned that, Tommy, how, how was it specifically growing up with a dad who was such a famous athlete in his sport? Right. Yeah. You know, it's a truly a unique resource. Um, I could go to, go to him for advice, whether I asked for it or not. Um, but since I was a young, since I was young, um, the biggest thing he's always preached on me was kind of how to conduct yourself in a professional manner, uh, whether it be in travel baseball or presenting yourself to college coaches or, you know, coming to school and now presenting yourself as a freshman on campus and trying to earn your way into the team, not even trying to be a star on the team, but just be able to contribute as much as you can and, and being humble about going out your business just to give your chance, give yourself a, the best possible chance you can to, to work up to a spot you want to pursue. Um, but he, yeah, he just, as a, being a walk-on, especially um, coming here to Indiana um, and, and reaching the heights that he did, just instilled the belief in me from afar that hard work um, each and every day can really set yourself up for success in every aspect of your life. Um, so that specifically is something that I'm really um, proud of him for doing, and it, it gives me a tremendous example to follow by. Have you ever tried playing some goalie? Uh, I did. Yeah, I did growing up. Um, I actually really liked it, but, um, you know, I just, I love baseball and it stuck with me since I was a little kid. So now I, I looking back on, it, I wish I played soccer a little bit longer than I did. Um, but I, I'm, I'm glad that it worked out this way. So, um, obviously baseball's taken off for me a little bit, so I'm, I'm fortunate to be where I am. And outside of team USA, do you have any soccer teams that you support? Uh, I'm a Chelsea fan, so hopefully nobody calls me a bandwagon for that. But um, my dad, his, one of his assistant coaches that he had in England was the assistant coach in uh, for Chelsea in uh, the late 2000s, early 2010s. And uh, we went over for a wedding over in London, and we got I got to meet all the, all the players of the Chelsea team and go on the team bus and get autographs and stuff like that, which nobody over there gets to do. Uh, so it was an unbelievable experience uh, that my brother and I got to have. So that made me a Chelsea fan. I've, I've been that way ever since. So talk a little bit about the uh, process for you for being recruited to IU. Um, what were your other options and why did you settle on, uh, on IU? Um, obviously being in Indiana, going playing for the Bulls, uh, IU saw me a lot. Um, I was recruited early, relatively early in my freshman, sophomore year, um, but I committed pretty late. I was probably one of the last guys to commit. Um, and I had a really hard time with the recruiting process for some reason. It, um, it took me a while to kind of to kind of go through it, but the Bulls organization was amazing in that aspect of it. You know, they, they really educate you on what you're looking for and, um, you know, how to go about the process. Uh, I was obviously recruited by Coach Lamonis and Coach Bunn primarily um, when they were here. So it's obviously a little bit different now than it was back then. Um, but Indiana was there from the beginning for the most part. And then I had a big summer, my 16 year old age group year um, down in Georgia in the big tournaments where I got some offers from uh, Ole Miss, Notre Dame and Miami of Florida, which are really like the three other schools that I was looking at. Um, and ultimately it came down to the business school and being close to my family. Um, I'm a business student at Kelly. So that was a big part of it being in a good education, uh, a good business program specifically. Um, and then my grandfather is a huge IU supporter. Um, I'm my multi-generational IU family. So that was a big aspect of uh, things that kind of stuck with me. I remember we went down on a one, I'd been down to IU 15, 20 times at this point. Um, and my mom was getting anxious because she really wanted me to commit to IU, but she wouldn't tell me. Um, so Lamona sat us down in the, in the dugout actually on the third base or first base dugout. And it was like giving, giving out this huge envisionment of me pitching in a regional and all this stuff with my parents in the stands and my grandpa sitting there and my mom just started dying, crying and lose her mind. I was like, dang it, man, you know, you're making it hard on me. So that was kind of the moment where I knew I was going to go to IU. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the decision I made. And you've, you've mentioned this a couple of times, but how was your experience with the Indiana Bulls? Uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things about the Bulls organization uh, from top to bottom. Everybody in there is 
extremely experienced at what they do. Um, a lot of professional guys throughout the organization that come back from the state of Indiana that, that are coming back to coach. Um, you know, everybody wants to go play for the big shot travel teams nowadays in our age groups um, and leave the Midwest. But we had a great team in our age group that really made uh, staying with the Bulls a lot of fun. Um, I know we had Dre Jamison who went to Ball State, who was a first round pick a couple of years ago. Zach Britton went to Louisville, was a fifth round pick last year. Um, you know, we had a really talented team, so it was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, being close to home at Grand Park a lot of the times was really easy for us. Um, but the mentorship and the, and the coaching from the Bulls organization was top notch. And, um, you know, obviously the relationship with Dan Held and now Scott Rowland being here um, was so beneficial for me growing up. Um, you know, they had so much professional experience and um, so many connections recruiting wise and professionally um, that it made it very easy for us to, you know, bounce questions off of them and, re and really develop as baseball players on and off the field. Um, so having them here now at IU has, has been a dream come true just because it was it was so easy to transition. You know, I remember <clears throat> uh, we were in summer ball up in Michigan with Sam Crail and a couple other guys um, from the team. And I got a phone call that um, Lamonis is going to Mississippi State. So we were really excited for him. And then um, when I heard that Dan and Scott were going to be our assistant coaches, I was so excited because, um, you know, it was like a home away from home for me. So having them to come here has been, has been a blessing. This past summer, uh, you pitched quite well and played a leadership role in the Grand Park Summer League title team. Uh, yeah. so what did you learn from that experience? Um, uh, just, just tell us a little bit about that, that whole experience this, this summer. Yeah, summer was fun. Um, obviously going through COVID March, April, May was, was really tough. Um, so just getting an opportunity to play anywhere was something that we were all excited about, let alone in my backyard. Um, and it's always a little bit more of a relaxed environment, summer baseball, where you've got coaches that are, you know, just willing to let you go out and play. So there was a lot of freedom involved that, that made it fun and refreshing. Um, and I knew we were all itching to compete because we had been out of baseball or anything for, you know, three months at that point. Um, and to, to cap it off the fact that we were with a lot of the guys from our team at IU from school. And then a lot of guys that I grew up playing with or against in summer baseball since we were seven, eight, nine years old um, was pretty special because we knew this was probably the last time that we would ever play baseball together again. And it was a pretty sentimental summer for me, which, which made it special and unique for sure. The weight room seems to be a pretty big part of your preparation. Uh, what specifically do you work on? Um, a lot of a lot of different things. Um, specifically over quarantine, with you know when when the season ended, I know it's hard to say this, but it was it was truly a blessing in disguise for me personally. Obviously, you know it was gut wrenching to lose lose the out on the season and to have guys like Cal Kruger and Grant Sloan and those guys miss out on their final year was really really difficult. Um, but I got a tremendous opportunity to be able to go home and really work on the things I need to work on and get better. Um, one of those things being the weight room, um, and athleticism was a big interest for me over that time, just because that was really one of the only things that we could work on. Um, and around me where I was from, it was pretty easy to find a, an open gym. I had some connections back home, so I was able to sneak into some places, um, and get some stuff done. Um, and it, it really contributed to my success over the summer. I, my velocity started to go up. Um, I felt better, I felt stronger, um, and, I, and I started to see the benefits of it, which was really exciting. So I stayed in, coach, in touch with Coach Will and, and the guys down here at the university um, throughout that time, and he has been a great resource for us. Um, but yeah, I couldn't speak more about our strength program and Coach Will and all, all the stuff that they have for us here and the resources. Um, yeah, it's helped me quite a bit, especially over these last eight months or so. And how is it working with Coach Will? It sounds like he's more than just someone who's who makes sure that you're working out. Right. You know, we we never call him really our strength coach. He's more he's just a coach. Like he's our life coach beyond just, you know, if we see him in the weight room every every three or four days, you know, he's always there to help us, whether it's with working out or any anything you got going on. He's he's a steady eddy guy that can help us um, you know, get through some things and a, a great resource that we really respect. Um, so, you know, he, he, put, he challenges us. He gives us a lot of crap sometimes, but, um, he holds us to a high standard and that's the thing that we all respect about him the most. So, uh, what, uh, how would you define your, uh, current pitch mix and kind of tell us about how, and if that's changed since you've come to IU. Okay. Uh, yeah, as a freshman came in, I, know, I thought I knew I was doing, but, um, it's evolved a little bit as it's, as it's gone on. So I threw a four seam fastball. Um, I don't have a very high spin fastball, so it, it sinks a lot. Uh, so I only throw a four seam because it 
a lot like my two seam. Um, I threw a changeup that Coach Bunn actually really helped me develop my freshman year. That's kind of become my go-to pitch. And then um, I started out as a curveball. Coach Bunn switched me to a slider, and now I'm back to a curveball. Um, but I've added a cutter now, so I added a cutter over this over the summer. Um, that's really helped me kind of go in on righties and, and open up the zone a little bit for me. Um, so that's kind of the big change that I've made over the course of the time that I've been here. Um, but typically the general framework for who we are as pitchers and kind of what we work with typically rarely changes drastically. Um, you just kind of, you know, begin to tinker with things and adjust them and obviously try to um, improve elements of it that you are lacking. Um, I definitely have done that over the course of, you know, three or four years. And Tommy, in 2019, you started the season in the rotation, but then you went out with injury. And when you returned, you were the early go-to man out of the pen. Uh, your first game back was a lights out two inning performance against Penn State. And we hadn't been told to expect you back. So it was a very pleasant surprise from the fan side. Uh, what was that game like for you? You know, it was good to be back. Uh, it wasn't too much of a high pressure situation. So it was good to kind of get my feet under me a little bit. At the time, I wasn't 100% coming back. Um, and at that point, we were in the heat of the Big Ten season. And I I was itching to get back. I knew that we were in a, in, a, in a good spot to move forward and to, you know, hopefully win the Big Ten, hopefully get into a regional, do all those things at that point. Um, so it was just an honor to go out and help the team win. At, you know, you just wanted to do anything that you could to, you know, push that even further and, and get us to another victory or do whatever you could do to, you know, get it to the next guy. Um, obviously, you know, people might think that it was difficult getting knocked out of a starting role or, you know, taking a back seat, but, you know, watching Saul Frank go out there every single weekend and just absolutely dominate was, was awesome. So I was very fortunate that he got to take my spot and have such a, a great career um, ending year and then obviously get drafted. Um, so I was more than willing to help him, you know, carry us to a Big Ten title. That was something that I was very comfortable doing, which made it a lot easier. Well, and you can't deny that uh, that, you know, that first role, <laughs> that first guy out of the bullpen on the weekends is so critical to this team. <laughs> the, yeah, absolutely. And has been for years. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, absolutely. You know, now we've got, you know, Braden Scott would be that guy now who's just yep. been so, mm -hmm. so valuable for our program uh, the last two years. And, you know, any role where you can have somebody who, who can handle their, you know, handle it out, out, out on the on the mound and, and really give yourself a chance to win is, is helpful. Um, by no means do I think that that's not a, a, an important role. Um, but, you know, it's just, you know, being able to adjust to what you're given and just go out and compete and do what you can to do to help the team win, um, no matter what position you're in, is, is always helpful. So adding another pitcher into the mix when we come back from injury is helpful, no matter who it is. So I was happy to come back. Well, I heard you talk a little bit about the uh, the, the the pitch that Coach Lamonis gave you uh, about uh, you know that trying to envision that. So you you did get to see an experience pretty pretty um, that was pretty amazing this this uh, past year. You know, opening day, you're the opening day pitcher at Alex Box Stadium. So mm -hmm. so uh, just just what was the experience? Just the whole environment and the experience like for you? You know, obviously we had, we were very excited to go down there. Um, we thought we had a really good chance to, you know, go down there and compete with one of the better teams in the country. Um, for me personally, it was a nightmare because I played terribly. So I was really, <laughs> really angry. Um, but a, a tremendous experience looking back on it. You know, I warm it up in the bullpen and you got 17,000 strong in the stands and LSU had just won the national championship in football. So Ed Orgeron was out there running around, parading himself around and throwing out the first pitch and fireworks are going off and you're, you know, you're amped and you're ready to go. So it was a really cool experience. Obviously, I wish that I had given us a better chance to win and let pitch a little better. But um, overall, I think it was a tremendous experience for our group, especially last year when, you know, we didn't get the whole season. But it, it was a good experience for all of us to play in a truly regional environment. Um, I could compare it to something like Texas, uh, where we were a couple of years ago with so many fans and loud and aggressive and intense. It, it's always a good experience to have those. Um, especially now with a, 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 an experienced group coming back that's that's ready to make into big games and, and go deep in the tournament, having that experience is going to be beneficial. Yeah. Well, you got some attention, though, soon after with that almost complete game you threw. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't you know, sell yourself still, short. <laughs> you know, I still give Merce crap about that one. I saw him come out after the second out. And, you know, <laughs> we, had a few, we had some words on the mound. But. <laughs> 
So Tommy, talk a little bit about how you've grown into a leadership role in your time with the Hoosiers. Yeah. Uh, so over time, I, you know, I just kind of grew into a role on the team uh, where they respected my opinion. Um, not necessarily because I was the best player by any means or, uh, but I had experience as a freshman growing it. And then each role, you know, each year, excuse me, my role kind of grew a little bit, a little bit. And I was able to speak from that experience now that I had it um, and just be there to help anyone that really needed to be brought along. Um, you know, it just goes from working hard every single day. I was on time for team meetings. I conducted myself well. I tried to be early for breakfast, be early for, you know, team departures and things like that. I tried to get good grades and do all the little things that allow the coaches and, and the players to trust you. Um, a lot of those things that new guys take for granted um, and eventually, you know, you can get left behind because you don't care, take care of those things. Um, a lot of that came from the foundation of things my dad taught me when I was little um, that aren't necessarily sports specific, but things that really separate yourself from other people. Um, not trying to, you know, better yourself than somebody else, but just to really um, either submit yourself in a position that you're in, get yourself a little bit um, into a more advantageous position or just to help other people along and, and really develop the group. You know, they've, these instincts have kind of helped me a lot as becoming an older season veteran on the team now and be able to kind of share those things with some of the younger guys that are willing to learn and willing to uh, develop. You know, the best part of our group now is that we have so many upperclassmen um, that have either been here in the program for so long or grad transfers like Jacob Southern, Grant Machaki, Colin Hopkins, Jordan Fusey um, that have have that experience and understanding of what it takes to win, what it takes to develop a strong strong group of guys and, and, a, and a strong, um, you know, well-connected culture that allows us to depend on each other and not have a hierarchical system where a lot of things can go wrong. Uh, you spoke a little bit earlier about, uh, about your major uh, and your, uh, the fact that, you know, you're in the, you're in the Kelly school. So can you kind of talk about um, the challenges in, you know, in a, in a pretty intense uh, academic environment and how you balance that with the, with the athletic work that you have? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. A lot of times you do have to make sacrifices. Um, I know sometimes you have to choose between, you know, do I, get a little bit extra sleep or do I take, you know, do my last little bit of homework or, you know, I, there's sacrifices that have to be made, but there's, it's worth it in the long run. Um, a lot of the things that I do in business correlate to baseball in terms of, you know, just being organized, setting your schedule on time, being, you know, being on top of your stuff. And, you know, it, it helps you mature very quickly because you, you can't take things for granted and, and, and really take any day off. If you leave two or three days behind, you've got hours and hours of work. Um, same thing with, with baseball. You can, you can get pushed behind pretty quickly if you're not taking care of your stuff. I think that was a really good thing that I was able to stay within the program for as long as possible and push myself academically. It's just given me a, a really good foundation for a, a positive lifestyle. Um, just, you know, doing those due diligent things and, and, and being organized enough to take care of high level activities on a daily basis rather than slacking off. I think that was the biggest part of it. And Tommy, do you have any uh, concrete plans on what you want to do post baseball whenever that might come around? I, I've given this a lot of thought, obviously the last few months, you know, getting closer and closer to that becoming a reality. Um, but it's so hard. Uh, the big, biggest issue for me is that I've, you know, been fortunate enough to go play summer baseball and be a part of all this stuff with the program now that um, as regular Kelly students, they get to do internships and all these things during the summer that I am not exposed to. Um, so I don't necessarily have a job lined up or have that experience of, of understanding even what realm I want to be in. Um, so I'm excited for that. You know, obviously I hope it waits a little bit longer, mm -hmm. um, but the openness to, is exciting for me. So I, I'm blessed to be in a position I'm in and I can't wait for that to come whenever it comes. Any particular connections that you've made with, uh, with uh, younger players on the team? A lot. Um, you know, you try to connect with everybody um, and not, uh, yeah, you know, we've got so many guys on our team now. You have a lot of guys that are, I'm not even around most of the day. Um, the position players, you know, where I'm really stuck in the, in the group of, of younger guys um, in the pitching staff, but I would say somebody that's really kind of impressed me and I've got, I've gained a lot of respect for is Alex, Alex Logish, you know, an incoming freshman from Missouri. Um, and just a lot like me, a mature guy who really handles his stuff well, a smart kid who understands what he needs to do and 
Um, I think we've bonded pretty well the last few few months over stuff that you know I've gone through that he's going to go through. I'm kind of telling him what he's going to, what role he's probably going to be in this year. You know how to how to anticipate that, how to just you know show up every day and be willing to work and and do your job, and how how much of a dividend that's going to pay for you in the long run. Um, you know, it's obviously everything is different this year with what we're going through. So even the experience that we're giving to these guys may not even be applicable to what they're going to go through. So it's really frustrating and hard. Um, but, you know, we're just going to, you know, take it day by day. And we've got so many other leaders on our team um, that takes the stress off of two or three guys from doing that job. You know, I feel like we do a great job as a group of, you know, just holding a, you know, a standard or a, you know, an expectation of what needs to be done on a daily basis that, you know, allows us to move forward as a group. And, and I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Obviously there's room for improvement every, everywhere. Um, but yeah, I would say that Alex is a, a great kid that I, I really respect and admire and think he's going to do great things here. And, you know, even if you're, you know, going to be limited to only facing you know, big 10 opponents during the regular season, uh, as you mentioned, you know, it's not just Indiana. Everybody's got larger rosters and much, and more experienced players. So you're going to find yourself pitching in games where, you know, maybe two years ago that seven, eight, nine hitters are not, are not quite as good as what you may be facing this coming season. Have you given that any thought and how you're going to play through those games? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, in, in that situation, we're also another team that's brought back a lot of talent. And I think we've on, on the positive end of that. Um, unfortunate for a lot of the guys that didn't get picked up last year, obviously to, to miss out on you know, making a lot of money or just chasing a dream. It, you know, it, it's really tough for a lot of those guys that don't get to do that, but we're obviously very fortunate to have them all back. Um, and we brought a lot back, back a lot of firepower. Um, a lot more than pretty much everybody in the big 10 that I can think of. Um, so in that position, we're extremely confident. Um, we know that everybody's bringing back people, but so are we, and we think we're better than you. Yep. Uh, so we, we like our chances. Um, I think we've got the biggest part of it that I think is going to really help us is the depth. Um, not only on the, uh, on the position side, but, you know, having 10, 12, 13 arms to bring out of the bullpen to really give yourself a chance to win especially if we're going to be playing it looks like it maybe four game weekends where you're, you know, you're really pushing for pitching. We have a, a very strong upper hand in that incision in that scenario when it comes to other big 10 teams um, where I think we've got a really good, good chance to win on the third and fourth games of the weekend that other teams, you know, are going to be scrapping together arms to, to compete with us. With that, have there been, have there been, been a lot of focus on, you know, among the, the starting core, a, uh, uh, developing and maintaining longevity um not necessarily um that kind of comes with just you know throwing every single day whether it be you know precision players obviously um it's just a grind for those guys you know they're in they're in the lineup every single yep. day you just got to push through it and they're used to it by this point you know they want to be in the lineup they want to play um so i don't think it's as much of an issue for those guys as it is for us um, me, I'm in a little bit of a unique situation being a starter. My situation doesn't necessarily change. Um, but yeah, the emphasis now having four game weekends and be able to come back from Friday to a Sunday, uh, to do it, you know, to throw two or three more innings or, you know, that's very important. Um, I'm sure as we get closer and closer to the season, we'll have more, um, real live game situations in practice that will be simulating a lot of that stuff for players like Braden Scott, Matt Lewicki, Gray Machaki guys that will come back multiple times in a weekend because they've done it before. Connor Manis as well. Um, sorry if I forget anybody else, but um, yeah, absolutely. That's the people that can do that out of the bullpen are extremely valuable um, because you double your availability. You know what I mean? If you, if you can only throw once a week and you're like, I hey, coach, I'm done. You don't have as much, you're not as much of an asset to the team as you are. If you can throw three, four five innings and really give us a chance to, to hold on to the rest of the bullpen and give yourself a chance to win. So um, we've got a lot of guys on the team that can do that, which is exciting. You know, now that we've had a group of sophomore guys that, that got pushed back because the older guys haven't gotten drafted. We've got a steeper bullpen of guys that can pitch multiple innings um, and kind of hold the middle innings where, you know, maybe I go four innings and, and, and are able to finish it out to have guys that can go the fifth, sixth and seventh and push it to the end of the bullpen. Um, 
we have multiple guys like that, which is, is really beneficial for our, for our longevity for the rest of the year, for sure. Cool. And talking a little bit about the changes with, uh, with the season with COVID this year, um, has there been any thought about the, uh, how the changes in travel are going to kind of impact your time management, your classwork, uh, all of that stuff. I mean, Indiana's pretty lucky in the middle of the conference. I would hate to be Minnesota traveling to Rutgers or vice versa. Right. Yeah. You know, I almost positive. I have, we haven't really been told much, but I'm pretty positive that we'll be busing pretty much everywhere. Um, so yeah, the bus is pretty much what you got to work with, uh, especially on those long rides, you know, you got to knock it out and it's, it's difficult. I've done it. It's not fun. Um, but it's just something we're going to have to deal with just like a lot of the other things that we don't want to deal with or feel like we should be exempt from that we have to abide by, if not 10 times more than everybody else. So, you know, with all that stuff, you just figure out a way to get it done. You know, you lean on your boys and, you know, try to get as much help or advice or whatever you need from as many people as you can. But, um, yeah, this, this upcoming spring is going to be a tough one for everybody. So. Um, we're just, you know, taking it day by day, staying bullheaded about the optimism of what we're going to do this year. And hopefully that pushes us far enough to get what we want done. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Tommy, it was great having you on and good luck with the coming season. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Uh, you can read up on Indiana Baseball at iubase.com. Follow us on Twitter at CU at the BART and at IUBase17. On Instagram, it's IUBase. And you can subscribe to the Talking Hoosier Baseball channel on YouTube, which features these video podcasts, game clips, media availabilities, and much more. For Carl James and Tommy Summer, I'm Casty Palmer. See you at the BART. <laughs>